You are the best you the world will see. Come along now and share you with me. Let's learn something new and share feelings too. Cause these are the things to do to be the best you. you feel it? No. Did you lose something? No. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Well, no. Possum, it's really important to know what makes you feel so sad so you can feel better. What have you been doing today? Well, well I was supposed to play with my friend Turtle, but she had to stay inside today. Oh. oh, that is disappointing. It sounds like you were really looking forward to having a good time with Turtle. Yeah, I was. Well, we were gonna go to the playground and, and then go swimming yeah. and then make sandcastles on the beach. Oh, now what am I gonna do? Oh, Possum, oh. I understand how you feel. Well, you do? Yes. Sometimes I feel sad and frustrated when my friends and I have fun plans, but then I don't get to see them. It doesn't feel good when plans change. No, it sure doesn't. But, like I said before, if we're able to name what's bothering us, what's making us feel sad, we can also name some things that make us feel better. But, well, how can we do that? Well... We can make a happy list. A, a what? A happy list. A list of things that make you feel good and happy. Oh. What are some of the things that you like to do by yourself? Hmm. Well, I like to read stories. I like to climb things. I like to make arts and crafts. And oh, I love to dig in the dirt. <laughs> That's a good start to your happy list, Possum. Now, what are some things that make you laugh or smile? Let's see, telling jokes and oh, splashing in puddles and <laughs> talking to you, Auntie Lena. Oh, thank you, Possum. I love talking to you too. That's a wonderful happy list and you can keep adding to it. But for now, let's pick one thing from your happy list that will cheer you up. Hmm, what should I pick? Oh, can, can we read a story, Auntie Lena? Well, of course we can. I have the perfect book in mind. It's a story about another person who, like yourself, wasn't feeling so happy. In fact, she was mad. Let's listen in as Mr. Jeff reads his book, Why is Jane So Mad? at the Tuckwilla Library with his friend. Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey Lee Cheatham II and I have the pleasure of reading my book to you, Why is Jane So Mad? And today I'm gonna to read my book with my friend Cyrus. You ready? All right, let's get going. A beautiful day today would bring. The sun is beaming and the birds will sing. We see two kids. The boy's name is Chad. The girl's name is Jane and Jane is mad. Chad was a kid who was always glad. He just couldn't see why Jane was so mad. To cheer up his friend, Chad came up with a plan. It will work, it has to stand. It was really a really concern for his friend, right? He made silly faces, sang a silly song, even did a handstand that lasted very long. After two cartwheels, Chad shouted, ta-da! But Jane shook her head and said, stop it, bah! What do you think about the colors? 
very cool colors. I heard you like to draw. You like to draw? Awesome. Chad sat down and thought what more he can do. Happiness is what she needs. This is true. Ooh, look at all these things. Like, yeah, pizza. What is this? Balloons. Balloons. Is that a cupcake right there? You like cupcakes? Awesome. You see anything else here you like? See the coloring uh, crayons right here? You like to draw, right? Moments later, Chad came back, whistling a tune. In his hand, he showed Jane was a pink balloon. Jane stomped the ground and let out an angry shout. Stop trying to cheer me up. Please cut it out. What does she look like now? Super mad? Super mad? <laughs> and she big mad, right? Now. Chad was crushed that he couldn't cheer up his friend. Suddenly, a man appeared and shook Chad's hand. The man smiled warmly and said, you're a great friend to Jane, Chad. Jane saw the man and said, Dad? Can you turn the page for me, buddy? Thank you. Jane ran to her dad and hugged him real tight. I miss you, Dad, she said. I miss you too, Jane. Everything is now all right. Jane was now smiling, no longer mad, sad, or blue. Jane's dad looked at both kids and asked, what would you two like to do? They made silly faces. That's really a silly face. <laughs> Sang a silly song. Jane, her dad, and Chad played all day long. Time flew by, and now it was getting dark. Jane looked at Chad and said, Sorry for being me, my friend. You are all heart. You turn the last page for me. Thanks a lot. Chad gave his friend a big hug and was taken home by Jane's dad. From his window, he was happy to see that Jane was no longer mad. Oh, Ian, so I have an important question to ask you, Cyrus. Did you like the story? Cool. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you. Wow. Jane was really mad. She sure was. And do you know why she was so mad? Well, because she was missing her dad. Well, kind of like how I was missing Turtle today. Oh, that's why I was feeling so sad. Exactly. See how Jane cheered up when she got to be silly with both her dad and her friend Chad? Mm -hmm. Playing with family and friends must have been on Jane's happy list. Yeah, and picking something off my happy list really did help. Thank you, Auntie Lena. After hearing that story, I don't feel sad like I did before. Oh, that's great, Possum. There's nothing wrong with feeling sad or mad. But remember, when you feel that way, you can always think about your happy list. Mm. Well, what's on your happy list, Auntie Lena? Ooh, that's a good question, Possum. Well, there's painting and taking walks on a sunny day and listening to music. Oh, what kind of music do you like to listen to? Well, I like to listen to all sorts of music. There's music I like when I'm sad, and music I like when I'm mad, and music that makes me feel happy. That's what's so great about music. It can be helpful just about any time. Oh, and can we listen to some music right now, Auntie Lena? That's an excellent idea, Possum. Let's visit with Miss Mona at the Northwest African American Museum, who loves to make all kinds of music. <laughs> Can I have 
this bomb? Mm, yes. Uh, Do you remember the name of it? Twinkle, twinkle, little yeah. star. How does it feel to hear the harp? It's calm. It's calming? Yes, it is calming, isn't it? There may be times where you don't necessarily feel calm. You feel, may feel sad, right? We have days like that. You may feel tired. You may feel different feelings where you can always go to music and understand that it will bring you a sense of something that will help you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were feeling sad, what do you think music may do to help us feel a sense of what? Make me happier. It may make you make happier. Most people it does, right? How would you like to do something with me and try harp today with me? Sure. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we use our fingers, we can pull these strings and try to make some beautiful sound together. So if you come a little closer and use the second finger, which creates the sound of pulling the string, the vibration of that string happens, right? Yes, you can pull that one and we'll create a rhythm together a rhythm or a pulse that stays nice and steady and I'll match a few songs to that and we'll have a little song going, okay? Is that the same tone? Yeah. It's the same song. What's this song? Watch the listen. create a different kind of feeling in you. Look at the smile on your face. Well, thank you for working with me today. Is it fun? I had a good time too. I hope you'll always remember how much music can help you with your feelings, Dom. I will. Wonderful. Well, Possum, it looks like you enjoyed that music, didn't you? Oh, Auntie Lena, I wish that I could play the harp. Then I think I would always feel happy. Well, it's never too late to learn. Even though some things are really hard at first, with time and practice, you can learn anything. Oh, you think so, Auntie Lena? I know so. You were supposed to go swimming with Turtle today, right? Oh, yeah. Well, think about when you first learned how to swim. It was a little scary, right? Oh, yeah. Well. I didn't even like the water. <laughs> and it was probably frustrating for a while until you got the hang of it. Yeah, I remember being upset that all my friends learned how to swim before I did. Yes, but you kept trying and practicing and you finally learned how to swim. Mm -hmm. Now, doesn't that accomplishment feel good? Oh, it sure does, Auntie Lena. <laughs> and I'm glad to hear that, Possum. And I'm also proud of you. Trying and learning new things, it can be fun. Hey, Auntie Lena. Yes, Possum. There is another thing I'd like to try. Oh, what's that? I want to learn how to make my own food. Oh, that's definitely important. And you know what? I think some of our friends are doing just that. Oh. Let's look and see what Miss Lika and our friends are making at the Northwest African American Museum. We're so happy to be here to do some cooking with my friends Peyton and Sanaya. And today we're gonna to be talking about how food makes us feel good. And there's a couple reasons why. Can you guys think about why food might make us feel good? It makes you strong? Yeah, do you have any thoughts? It tastes yummy. Oh, it tastes so yummy. So food can make us feel healthy and strong and it can make us feel really happy because it tastes good. And one of my favorite things is that it brings people together. And when we eat together, we can feel really good. And sometimes when you have somebody that's really special to you and you eat something with them, or maybe they make you a special meal, when you're not with them and you eat that food, it can remind you of them, right? So I have this favorite food, it's the white peaches that I used to eat when I was in Japan visiting my grandparents. And they're very, very far away. And so whenever I eat a white peach, it makes me think of them and it makes me feel so happy. Do you guys have any favorite foods? Yeah, what do you like? 
blueberries. Excellent, we do have some blueberries today. So what we're gonna make today is some parfaits, some fruit parfaits. This is what it looks like when it's done. And we're going to go through and make them together. It's really, really simple and you guys can make them at home. Um, it's a nice snack. It's also a really great breakfast. So I'm gonna just talk you guys through and then you can make it. Does that sound good? All right, so what we have is a little cup and then we have different ingredients. So do you guys know what this is? Yogurt. Yogurt, yes, yogurt. And then what about this? Yeah, you can't remember. It's called granola. And what that does is it adds like a crunchy texture. And then what about these? Strawberries. strawberries. You know strawberries. And these? Blueberries. Blueberries. So one thing that's really nice about food, like we said, is that it can taste really delicious. And that's sometimes what we love about it. So. I would love for you guys to try a strawberry. So before you eat it, just smell it. See what it feels like in your fingers. And maybe even if you close your eyes, you might be able to have more sense of it. So go ahead and put it in your mouth. And feel what it's like in your mouth. It's kind of big, huh? And then when you chew on it, what is that like? <laughs> Yummy too, tummy. So we have a lot of different flavors here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer it in our cups. So I'll give you a cup and I'll give you a cup. What do you wanna start with? The strawberries. So why don't you take two scoops and put it in your cup. There you go. Excellent. And then you can go ahead and try. And why don't you try one of the layers of yogurt. Your two. That's a good one. Too big. That's okay. There you go. And then you could try the granola. But go ahead as well. Put that in there. And then the last layer we can do is our blueberries. So for those of you at home, you can make this so easily. You just need some yogurt. This one is a, a vanilla yogurt, but you could also use plain. Um, it's always nice to kind of look and see how much sugar's in there, because sometimes it can be a lot without realizing it. Um, and then just cut up the strawberries. You could slice them. I put them into chunks. The blueberries, and Sanaya had a great suggestion. You could have frozen blueberries, and then that way it adds a nice, almost like a popsicle in there. And then any kind of granola that you feel like for that extra added crunch. All right, and can I give you a spoon? All right, you wanna give it a try? What do you think? That's good. So I'm wondering, do you guys cook at home? You do? What do you like to make? Chicken noodle soup is my favorite. Oh, chicken noodle soup is so good. What about you? You like to make chicken? Nice, and do you guys ever cook with somebody special? Mama. Your mama, what about you? And how does that feel? Oh, you feel happy when you cook? I feel so close when I get to cook with somebody, so I feel like I get to know you guys a little bit better when I get to cook with you. All right, you guys were so brave to try something new, and thank you so much for cooking with me. It was pretty easy, huh? Yeah, do you think that our friends at home could make this if they wanted to? Easy, huh? All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you have a healthy and happy day. Bye, you guys wanna wave? Mm, 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 mm. Oh, those look <laughs> yummy, Auntie Lena. <laughs> yes, they sure do. It was fun learning how to make fruit parfaits. Mm. Oh, yeah, and I'll teach Turtle how to make them next time I see her. <laughs> <gasps> now what are we going to do, Auntie Lena? Wow, you're really on a roll, Possum. <laughs> Let's see. Well, you know, one of the other things on your happy list was arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. And art is a great way to express your feelings. Yeah, that sounds like fun. What are we gonna make? Have you ever made a mask before? Mm, no, but well, I've worn a mask. A spooky one for Halloween. <laughs> That's right. And a lot of people wear masks on Halloween to dress up as other characters or other people. You can also wear masks to show your own feelings. Let's watch Miss Mimi at the Seattle Children's Museum teach our friends how to make masks. 
Hi friends, welcome. Today we will be making paper masks and we are here with Dom and Trey. These are all of the materials that we have here. We have markers, we have some tape, we have glue, liquid glue, glue sticks, some feathers, some pom-poms. We are showing emotions through our masks. How are you all feeling today? Good. Good? Like? I'm feeling grateful. Grateful? Nice, why are you grateful? Because I'm here right now. Oh, that's so awesome. Me too. I'm grateful to be here with you all. What um, emotion would you like to show, represent on your mask? Calm. A calm? How do you think you would do that? What colors would you use to represent a calm state? Um, I would use gray something. Some gray? Like, like this or markers? No. OK. So we have some gray. And what kind of emotion do you want to represent on your mask? Happiness. Happiness? What colors remind you of happiness? Or when you think of happiness, what colors do you think of? Mm -hmm. Maybe blue. Blue, okay. All right, so what do you want to start with? Markers. Ooh. Red. Why'd you choose red? Just the inside of your mouth, red. True. So you're, you have your mouth open. Are you like screaming with excitement right now? No, smiling. Oh, you're smiling. Okay, okay, I like it. Do you have an idea how you're going to express calm, Dom? Huh? How you're going to express calmness? Just gonna make a straight face. Just a straight face? Okay. Are you doing that with a marker? Or are you adding something onto it? I'm gonna add. I'm okay. gonna add this. Okay. I'm gonna make the hair now. Okay, so with feathers. Yeah. Do you want a combination of colors or do you just want like one color? Just maybe a combination. Awesome. So you can just add blue all over the place? Are you all done? Ears. Ears, okay, what are you gonna use for ears? Mm -hmm. We have pipe cleaners that you have. I'll make something no. out of the, the no. pipe cleaner. Okay. I want some hair. You want some hair? Yeah. What do you want for your hair? Do you want pipe cleaners, feathers? Feathers. Feathers as well, okay. Can you show Dom what we did for your hair, for your feather hair? I made mine straight. Yeah, do you want? So like, I did mine. So if you would probably put yours maybe like to the side, like this, and maybe you could go down, maybe. Okay, yeah. How do you all feel? Good. Yeah? Okay. Okay? It's okay to be okay. How, how do you feel about your mask, Trey? Good. Good? You like it? Yeah? Yeah. It's really fun. That was fun. Right. That was fun? You liked it? I had fun with you all too. Thanks for joining us. You know what, Auntie Lena? What's that, Possum? This year for Halloween? I'm gonna make my own mask. Well, that's a wonderful idea. Hey, Possum. How are you feeling now? Oh, I feel much better. I got to read with my friends and listen to music and learn how to make a healthy snack and we did some arts and crafts. <laughs> oh, I can't wait until the next time I see Turtle. I'm gonna tell her all about the fun things I did with you today. Yes, and they were all things that were on your happy list. Don't forget to use it next time you feel sad. I won't, Auntie Lena. Thank you. You're welcome, Possum. And friends, thank you for being with us today on Look, Listen, and Learn. And remember, you're the best you that the world will ever see. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now.
moms, dads, aunties and uncles, grandparents and all the rest of you out there caring for children. How are you feeling right now? Happy? Upset? Fired up? Or tired? The ability to name and share our feelings is an important skill. It's part of what is known as learning to self-regulate one of the many key tasks of growing up. And what's it mean, self-regulation? Well, it's the ability to purposely manage our thoughts and our feelings. It looks different at different ages for younger children. It can mean learning to use words to say how they feel. You can help your child talk about their feelings, and here's how. Start with yourself. Acknowledge and deal with your own feelings. Are you feeling stressed out? Try some deep breaths. Use the language of feelings. Name and talk about your own feelings as Auntie Lena did. Respond warmly and openly to your child. Use eye contact, conversation, or a comforting physical gesture, like a hug. Whatever is right for your child in that situation. Notice when children use the language of feelings to express themselves. And remember that a little praise goes a long way to help your child feel cared for and loved. 